Two weeks ago, I released a fork of Bolt.nu, which is one of the best AI coding assistants out there. My primary goal was to make it possible to use any large language model, especially local ones, to work with Bolt.nu, because the official version only supports using a single model. I just wanted to release something cool and practical, just like any other content on my channel. However, once I released this fork, a lot of you started to contribute additional features, and it became clear to me, after only like 10 days, that we are really starting to build a community around making the best open source AI coding assistant out there. At least that's the vision that a lot of us have now, and I am stoked out of my mind for this. So today, I have four quick updates that I cannot wait to share with you. I'll cover each of those, and then also dive into recent and feature additions to the fork and cover priorities for upcoming changes to the project. I'll also shout out all of you who made contributions recently because I seriously appreciate each and every one of you. A lot of exciting stuff, so let's go ahead and get right into it. So first things first, I just wanted to call out that we have had 20 pull requests into this Bolt.new fork in just the last week alone. So our fork is going really, really strong and there's so many amazing people contributing amazing things. And really it's gotten to the point where I have committed to myself to really maintain this long term and build this up for the community because together we are really making something awesome and I don't just want this to be another project for content for my channel. I really want to turn this into something larger for all of us to build together. To go along with that, my second update is I am soon going to be releasing a discourse community so we can have a place to chat about this project, plan upcoming changes, maintain everything, really just make sure that together we are in fact building the best open source AI coding assistant. A lot of you have requested a community recently and so I'm really excited to bring this to you and also this is going to be a part of a larger project that I'm building behind the scenes to have a community for my entire channel so I'm really excited for that and the bolt.new fork is going to be a huge part of this community so stay tuned for more updates on the community because I am so so excited about that and we'll be releasing it really really soon the next update that I have is that I am opening up applications to become a core contributor to this bolt.new fork Anybody is welcome to make contributions by forking the repo, making their own changes, and then bringing it in as a pull request. The difference is with a core contributor, you're actually a maintainer of the project with access to the repo. So you can do things like approve pull requests, merge pull requests, make emergency bug fixes, all that good stuff, because this project is growing to the point very quickly where I need help. I can't just maintain everything myself, especially as we scale and start to get dozens and dozens of pull requests every single week. So I want to ensure the success of this project and having others come alongside and help me as maintainers is gonna be really, really important. So in the description, I will have a link to the Google form, an application to become a core contributor. So if you're interested in that and you have a lot of experience developing, especially with generative AI and open source projects, I really, really want you to apply. I'm expecting there to be quite a few applications and so even if you're really really qualified doesn't necessarily mean that you will become a core contributor but I need a lot of help and so I will be accepting a lot of applications. So please apply below. I am looking forward to working with you and having you become a maintainer for this Bolt.new fork. The last update that I have for you is that this project is blowing up so much that I'm going to start making regular content on it on my channel including a tutorial soon on how to get this up and running yourself on your machine. Something that a lot of you have requested and it's really important to make this really easy for everybody to get up and running and really accessible. I might even be making content weekly for updates on this project. I'm still trying to figure out my content calendar and how it'll work, but I want to make regular updates regardless because I want to keep this project moving really, really fast just like it already is. So that's everything that I have for updates and now I would love to dive into recent additions to this fork and talk about upcoming changes as well. All right, let's go ahead and dive into the recent additions to this bolt.new fork. So I'm in the root of my GitHub repository here with the readme and if you scroll down a little bit you'll see this wonderful list that we have here of everything that's been added and needs to be added and will be added soon so I'll cover the second list in a little bit but right now I want to focus on the things that have been added recently so on the last update that I gave for this fork my last video this was the last edition that I covered, which by the way, this is really fantastic as well, being able to download what the AI builds for you as a zip file. Uh, but next up, the first thing that I merged into my main branch after that last video is this change right here. And I'll call out each of the authors when I show the actual pull requests. So I'm not gonna cover that here, but you can see all the authors of these editions right here as well. 
So improvements to the main bolt.new prompt. Essentially what was done here was a little bit of chain of thought prompting within the main bolt.new prompt, just to get the LLM to think a little bit before it spits out all the code. Um, so it's not like a major thing that'll make it work all of a sudden with even really small LLMs, but this is still a really helpful addition uh, just to make the LLM perform a little bit better for this open source version of Bolt. So thank you very much for that. Next up, we have the DeepSeq API integration. This is a great addition because you can use DeepSeq through OpenRouter as well, for example, but a lot of people actually requested the DeepSeq API integration itself um, because DeepSeq Coder is just a fantastic model for coding projects in general, so it fits really, really well with this bolt.new fork. Also the addition of Mistral. A lot of people like using Mistral, so this is a great API integration as well. Uh, and then for the last integration addition, this one is unique and very, very cool. OpenAI-like API integration. So for those of you who don't know, a lot of providers like Grok, for example, actually make their API for using their LLMs OpenAI compatible. And what that means is in your code, you could be using the Burst Cell AI SDK, LangChain, it doesn't matter. You can set up an OpenAI instance, but then just change the base URL from the URL that points to OpenAI for like GPT to whatever the URL is that that provider set up. And so like Grok, for example, or there's even other things like, like Fireworks or Together, like all these have OpenAI compatible APIs. So you can act like you're just setting up an OpenAI instance, but actually use the models through that provider. And so uh, what this did right here is make that generic where you can set up as an environment variable that base URL so you can talk to all those different services. So really this adds a lot of integrations at once, which is super, super neat. So a little bit more technical there, uh, but for those of you who care about that, I wanted to call out what that does exactly, because that is just fantastic. The next one is the ability to sync files to a local folder. This is a one-way sync, so you can take the structure that was created, all the files created in the web container within the bolt.new UI, and push that out to a folder on your computer. So it's similar to being able to download the project as a zip, um, but this way you just get it directly within a folder on your computer, uh, which is really nice and convenient. There's kind of like two ways basically now to extract everything from this bolt.new fork once you generate a project. Zip file might be better when you want to send it over to someone right away. And then this one way sync to a local folder might be better when you want to then like open it in VS code, for example, without having to extract from a zip. So both are fantastic additions. This one is just the newer one here. Uh, last up, or actually second to last right here, being able to containerize the application with Docker. This is a big one that I was really looking for. So I appreciate this getting added as well because it's also going to make it easier to get this up and running on your local machine. So when I make a tutorial in the near future on how to get this up and running, I'm gonna be doing it through Docker because it'll make it easier for everybody. And then the last change that we've got going on right now is being able to publish projects directly to GitHub. This is fantastic because not only now can you download it locally as a zip file or pushing it to a folder, you can push it directly to GitHub. And I've tested all of these integrations here, including this one. So I actually have like a public repo where I just published a sample app using this functionality and it worked fantastic and it is great. Um, and yeah, this one specifically, there might be a couple of changes that would be good improvements to this. Like the UI isn't the best for publishing to GitHub right now, um, but this fan, this is still a fantastic change. And really all of these could maybe use like a little bit of um, more addition and, and refinement, but that's what open source is all about. Just making these changes and continuing to iterate on it together. So absolutely fantastic. And then also I just wanna call out that I have some pull requests here that are still pending. There's still some things I have to look through and a couple of comments that I had for some people, just questions for follow-up before I merge these things. Um, but I'm getting all through all of this and uh, that's my commitment to you because I really want to consider every single one of your pull requests. And so each of them that I've merged, I've also commented on, uh, provided my feedback and tested and everything. So I'm really paying close attention to everything that is coming into this fork. Um, and so lastly, I just wanna cover these pull requests really quick and call out everybody who has made changes. So first of all, Kofi added the structured planning step, like, kind of like that chain of thought to improve the prompting. So thank you Kofi for that. Uh, David added a fix for Llama 3.1 models because the max tokens had to be reduced very, very slightly to make it work. Otherwise those models were crashing when you use like Grok with Llama 3.1, for example. So thank you, David, for that. 
Aaron added the Docker editions, which I appreciate a ton because again, I'm going to be using these for my tutorial on how to get this up and running yourself. Um, and then let's see here. We got the GitHub functionality by Gonzalo. Thank you very much for adding this. Um, that was one of the bigger changes. So I appreciate it a lot. And then adding the one-way sync to local folders was done by Musafer, so thank you very much for that. And if I'm pronouncing anyone's names or GitHub usernames incorrectly, I'm really, really sorry. I'm trying my best here. Um, but yeah, a lot of people have very unique GitHub usernames. Um, yeah, so adding Mistral models by Arul. Thank you very much for adding Mistral. Everyone loves Mistral, so much, much needed. Um, enhancing Olama model integration, adding some TypeScript stuff as well, just to make that really, really clean by Tarek. Thank you very much for adding that in. Uh, the DeepSeek integration by Zenith. Awesome. Thank you very much for that. Again, DeepSeek Coder is a fantastic model, especially the 236 billion parameter version for Bolt.new. So I definitely recommend trying that out. And then adding the OpenAI-like integration by Zerkzy. Thank you very much for adding that. And then the last one that I merged at this point by NoobYDP, adding the further changes to support the Olama API base URL. This was a problem initially when we added some more functionality around Olama where it wasn't actually working unless you actually had Olama hosted localhost on port 113 or 434. Um, so if you had it hosted on like another machine, for example, it wasn't working here. But with these changes now, it actually is working. So thank you very much for adding that in. And that is everything that we have for changes. So now I want to dive into upcoming changes for this project, including some very top priority items that I'm really excited to get implemented. Okay, the very last thing that I want to cover in this video is a list of upcoming changes, including a couple that are really, really high priority that I want to have implemented ASAP to make this truly a robust project here. So the first one that I wanna call out is that someone has already implemented a pull request for a big issue with Bolt where it loves to rewrite files or sometimes entire projects. So it's a bit of a larger change, so I still need to do the pull request here, but I wanna call out this has already been done, it's just not merged yet. Then we get to a few of the really, really high priority items. These are things that like, if could be implemented like today, would make this project like two times better, 10 times better. I don't even know, because there's a lot of possibility here. Larger changes overall. The first one, it's better prompting to make this work for smaller large language models. A huge issue right now when you use models that are especially like smaller than like 30 billion parameters or even 70 billion parameters is the code window doesn't always start. So you prompt the LLM to make an app for you and it'll just act like a regular chat widget where it doesn't open up the web container on the right side of the interface. And that's a huge problem because one of the big goals of this project is to make it possible to use any LLM, including local ones. And sure, there are local ones that are big enough to do this, but for a lot of people's hardware, they have to use smaller ones. And so it is so important for me to figure this out. It's gonna be one of the more challenging parts of this project, but it is high priority because it is a big deal. Also, the open source version of Bolt.new does not implement image attachments by default. That's something that they have kind of closed source for their official version. And so we need to add that because that would be a great addition. Uh, the last high priority item is more general. We could take this in a lot of different ways. I'm super flexible and open to whatever you might want to implement. But being able to actually run agents in the back end as opposed to just calling a single model. Because right now, you select your model like Claude 3.5 Sonnet and you just send a single request in, get a, a response back and then that has all the artifacts and stuff that you display in the web container. But there's, there's no like actual agentic workflow behind the scenes where you could have multiple different models interacting together or have different processes for like chain of thought and self-reflection and self-improving behind the scenes before a response is given. There is millions of things that you could do with agents in the background. And so this is like probably the most exciting thing for me, honestly, out of everything in this list that is yet to be implemented is using agents in the background. And again, this can be done in so many different ways. And so if you are inspired to make a change, make a pull request for this, I'm so open to whatever you might want to do with agents, whether you're going to use Langchain or Swarm or Llama Index or Crew AI, like it doesn't matter to me, something totally custom. Just make an awesome pull request and I will dive so deep into that and make sure that we get that integrated. Um, then we got some integrations that are still left to do with other LLMs like LM Studio, Together, Azure OpenAI, Hugging Face and Perplexity. Um, so any of these would be awesome. Also, the OpenAI-like integration could apply to some of these as well. So it's something that I still want to look into or we could look into as a community. 
And then yes, just a couple of other features that'd be really nice that I'll cover really quickly here. Being able to deploy directly to something like Vercel or Netlify would be super cool. Um, being able to load projects into the apps, so maybe even having like a two-way sync with a local folder um, would be super cool. The ability to revert code to an earlier version. So if you are working with Bolton and it like messes up and you're like, oh, just go back, please. You can kind of do that with the prompting right now, but usually it doesn't quite revert fully. Uh, so that would be great. Prompt caching just for speed. The ability to enter API keys in the UI so that you can spin this up and not actually have to go and create that .env file. Um, and then also having the LLM plan the project in a markdown file so that that would be like a part of the file structure. Like it'd be one of the files there. So you can kind of see its thought process behind the scenes. And it also might lead to better results because it'd kind of be like a chain of thought enhancement as well. So that is everything that we got right now. If these three got knocked out in the last or in the next like week or two, that would be insane. So that's kind of what I'm crossing my fingers for here. And I'll, I'll work on contributing myself. Um, but yeah, at this point, I'm definitely like kind of taking on the role of just like organizing everything together. But I would love to contribute more as well. So yeah, that's everything as far as future work and what we got coming up. All really, really exciting stuff. So there you go. That is everything that is happening with this Bolt.new fork. It sure is a lot, but I am loving it. And I'm so excited to see where we continue to take this project as a community. And I'm gonna be continuing to provide a lot of updates as I get the community going, as more features roll in, as we plan more things, as I get some applications for core contributors. Yeah, I'll keep you up to date on all of that. So if you're looking forward to that, if you're excited to get updates on this fork and use it for yourself, I would really appreciate a like and a subscribe. And with that, I will see you in the next video.